I'm going to kick off as we've got, I'll let um, those who are joining, um, hello and welcome. So um, as I said, I'm Stephanie Danvers and I'm the events and engagement leader at Always Possible. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this is the third session in the final series of Recover and Rise SME Digital Accelerator. So I hope no one's suffering from the January blues and ready to get the business ready for a great 2022. So for those who are new to the series, these events are run by West Sussex County Council and have been taking place since September, so back um, last year. They're organised to help small and medium businesses utilise digital tools and gain expert knowledge and advice on how best to grow your online presence and attract and retain new customers. So previous sessions um, from other partners, including Freedom Works and Creative Bloom, have presented sessions on getting online, customers and marketing and systems and productivity. And this, uh, well, the second week, we've moved on to the final series. So this is run by Always Possible, where I'm from, and we'll be looking at growth, expansion and new products. Um, so the aim of the series is to help you, um, help your businesses create the right conditions for growth in a digital world, something we can't ignore any longer. So this includes tools, automation, online sales, cybersecurity, which we did last week, and keeping productive, which is what Lindsay will be covering today. So I really do hope you'll be able to join us for future sessions. So they'll be running every Tuesday and Thursday throughout January. And the link for the booking is going to be shared here. So I also want to take this time to introduce you to our digital champions. I mentioned Lisa earlier, who's joining us um, today. And um, yeah, so ultimately, all attendees that are going to be joining, you are now eligible to eight hours of free specialist support from one of our digital champions. There's seven of them experting in all range of digital tools. So specialisms in consultancy, marketing technology, and all aspects of digital adoption. So I'm just gonna put them up here. Lisa um, on this slide here is joining us today. So she's gonna be speaking um, after Lindsay's speech, but she's gonna be on hand throughout. So any area she, uh, she's gonna drop in today. So there's the other three as well. As I said, there's seven of them. So I'll get her to explain a little bit more around um, how you access your support at the end of the session. So the Digital Champions, as I said, they're, they're joining us um, all the sessions and um, can give you a bit more information on how to um, get your support and, and expertise that they have. So um, there's some details here, but I'll get Lisa to cover that off at the end. You've all have, um, you'll all have individual needs. So the specific support, so whether it's um, someone in marketing or someone in another specialism, they'll, um, they'll direct you to the right person that can, can help your specialism. So um, this slide is just going to show the session we're running today, Technology for Growth, and we'll be continuing all our sessions from Series 4 throughout January. So please find them all listed here. Um, we'll include the link again to book, and um, I'll talk to you about today's session. As I mentioned, Lind Lindsay is going to be joining us in a second. Um, Lindsay is a business coach and trainer specializing in time management and productivity, helping businesses, owners, teams, and organizations improve their time management, increase their productivity, and get more done. Lindsay will be spending this lunchtime with you exploring the various apps on the market and how you can use technology to save time and increase sales. So over to you, Lindsay. Super, thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you for your warm welcome this morning. Delighted to be here with you um, and to run this webinar with you this morning. Um, before I make a start, it'd be really useful just to um, for you to drop in the chat. Um, be great to sort of know who you are, where you're coming from um, and your business um, or where you work. And also feel free to drop down in the chat any challenges that you're particularly experiencing the moment or you've experienced um, in the past. Um, often people are sharing very similar, if not the same challenges. So it'd be really useful just to kind of gauge um, where you are at in terms of accessing technology um, and productivity tools to help you. So yeah, just to put in the chat um, where you're working, your role, where you're working and um, any challenges that you're particularly experiencing, that'd be really helpful. Thank you. And I love how um, St. John has put in the chat um, that his productivity challenge is getting it all done. 
yes uh, it's a very common challenge um and i think it's often it's about adjusting our expectations of what we can get done um and finding ways to support us and processes and systems in place to reduce some of that overwhelm um that we can experience of trying to get it all done not enough hours in the day sometimes so but hopefully the tools and the techniques and the tips i'm going to share with you this afternoon will help you with that Great, super. Well, thank you very much for those that have um, yeah, commented in the chat and uh, lovely to virtually hear about hear about you and your business. And I'll definitely be having a look into those a little bit later on. Super, so you are in the right place. How do I use technology to save time and increase sales? That's what we're gonna be focusing on um, this afternoon. So um, Stephanie already introduced me, but um, just to recap, so I'm Lindsay Siegel, founder of Heads Up Coaching. I'm a business coach and trainer specialising in time management and productivity. Um, and I live and work um, in, in my home office in Brighton Hove. And uh, yeah, delighted to be with you here this afternoon. So this is just a bit of an overview of how I help. So um, I work with business owners, teams and organisations to improve their time management, increase their productivity, get more done and ultimately reach their goals. And I do that through offering group training, courses and one-to-one -one coaching. So there's a little bit of an overview of how I help. So these different modules, the first one's business planning and development. So we'll talk through a little bit about these. Um, so that's just really helping people and businesses to achieve their business goals um, by creating an action plan with the next steps for their business, particularly topical um, at the moment whilst people are setting new goals for the year. Then time management and productivity, which is my area of, of specialism, and that's where I help um, sort of people to learn different tools and tips and techniques to help manage their time and their workload, boost their productivity and get more done. Um, I also run um, a training program uh, that I've co-created, which is productivity and well-being, um, because they're kind of both sides of the same coin. And that's really helping to boost the productivity and performance of teams whilst also prioritizing their mental, physical and emotional health and well-being. Then there's email management. So helping to banish email overwhelm, gain control of your inbox and boost your productivity. Um, website, I offer a website review where I um, help people's websites work better for their business and improving its content design, usability and effectiveness. And then there's accountability. So that's specific coaching that I offer to help um, keep people on track and accountable to achieve their business goals. Um, I also run something called action learning, which brings a group of people together. It can be a team or it can be separate people uh, that come together to um, to work on an idea or a challenge that they're experiencing. And it's kind of like a peer support session. So um, through sort of structured questioning and um, support, encourage people to find solutions to those challenges or those implement their ideas. And then they share their feedback with the rest of the groups. So people can learn from their journey and, and um, often people are sort of experiencing similar struggles and, and ideas and opportunities. So that's something I also offer alongside um, a workshop, which is coaching skills to grow your team and business, where people can learn practical solution focused coaching skills to strengthen communication, productivity and performance of their team. So that's just a little bit of an overview about who I am and how I help. Um, on to what we're going to cover this afternoon. So the learning aims and outcomes for the webinar today is to understand your relationship with time and your productivity style, to apply a range of strategies, tools and techniques to plan and prioritise your time and tasks, use a range of different tools to minimise distractions and track your productivity, understand the latest e-commerce tools and understand how you can save time and increase income with different digital tools. So um, before I carry on, just want to um, sort of just remind you really of sort of principles for the webinar. So um, anything you did, you disclose in the chat um, will be confidential, kept in the streets of confidence, or it's been non-judgmental space where you can um, ask questions and feel free to share um, you know, experiences and challenges that you're experiencing. Um, want it to be a positive experience and openness to new ideas listen to the person who's talking and please feel free to ask any questions at any point. So um, uh, the chat is there for you to ask any questions and we will be building in a Q&A session at the end of the session as well. So moving on to understand your relationship with time and I'm for purposely putting this at the beginning of the webinar today because I think when we're thinking about time management, we're thinking about productivity and we're thinking about sales and growth within our business, 
we really need to understand the relationship that we have with time because we have different relationships with time. But generally, there are two different types. Um, and there's a chap called Tad James who identified these two different types of people. And he labeled them three time people and in time people. So I'm gonna share a little bit about those different uh, types with you next. And I invite you to have a think about which one of these you identify with. Sometimes people have a bit of a mixture of the two, um, but yeah, I'm gonna share that with you and invite you to share in the chat which one of these uh, most resonates with you. So three time people are generally organized, they're punctual, they meet deadlines, they like using lists and they're planners. Then you've got in time people who tend to be spontaneous, they focus on the here and now, they have to work quite hard to be on time, it doesn't necessarily come that naturally to them. They often have several projects on the go, at the same time and they can become easily distracted so to recap on those again three time people and in time people and i invite you in the chat to um to yeah just to share which one of those most resonates with you and Gillian saying a bit of both yeah that's sometimes people do say they kind of they, they get bits of one and bits of the other. Um, often people, they're making lists and they're trying really hard to be on time. So they're, they're, um, they're free time, but with a little bits of in time as well. Yeah, lots of both. So both Annie Marie, Lisa, St. John. St. John's saying firmly in time, but trying to be three time. Yeah, that's, that's really, really common. Um, a bit of both for Isla. Um, in time for work, but more through in person. Yeah, that's 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 very very common. Often people they're so they kind of have all these systems in place um, in their professional lives, but yeah, they kind of want to escape from that in their personal lives to almost kind of rejuvenate and bring bring themselves back to work again um, after sort of the weekend or holiday. So yeah, that's quite common to be different in your personal life and your professional life. But yeah, I thought this was really really super interesting, and it definitely when I came across this, it really kind of made sense. It it made sense with me personally, but also um, thinking. About about the people that I work with and, and my husband as well and just kind of understanding those differences um, I think is, is, is important. Um, we're going to move next on to ident identifying your productivity style. So again I really want to invite you to think about which one of these most resonates with you. Um, for those of you that work in a team think or work closely alongside others to have a think about which one of these categories they fall into as well. So first we've got the prioritizers. So prioritizers, um, they generally prefer logical, analytical, fact-based, um, critical and realistic thinking. They use time effectively and efficiently by focusing on the highest value task um, and they complete work quickly. So that's the prioritizers. Then you've got the planners. They prefer organized, sequential, planned and detailed thinking. They maintain detailed lists and they frequently complete work in advance of deadlines. Moving next on to arrangers. So arrangers block out time to complete work. They encourage teamwork to maximize work output. They excel at partnering with people to get work done and they make decisions intuitively in real time as events unfold. And then last of all, we've got the visualizers. So they see the big picture. They don't spend time on the details. They tend to think strategically about projects and they manage multiple ideas simultaneously. They're good at brainstorming solutions to problems and they drive innovation. So often people in more senior positions um, or directors of the, of the company um, or founders sort of having that, that overview role. So just to recap on those for you. So you've got the prioritizers got the planners, arrangers, and visualizers. So um, again, in the chat, I invite you to um, just drop down which one of those productivity styles resonates most of all with you. And Vic is saying all of them. <laughs> That is, um, and that is that is a sign of a brilliant, a brilliant brain that you're kind of bringing it all together. Um, sometimes one of them is a bit more dominant, um, but sometimes people are kind of juggling these different productivity styles um, all at the same time. I love how Vic has put frazzled brain. Hopefully not after today. Hopefully not after the uh, the webinar this afternoon. Um, so John saying a ranger, but moving towards a visualizer. And Stephanie is a planner and an arranger. And Emma, a ranger and planner. Yeah, it's quite common to kind of have a bit of both. But as I said, one of them tends to be, um, tends to dominate. Super. 
that's that's great to hear thank you so moving next on to i just wanted to kind of set that scene really and before we kind of delve into tools and techniques and um, just wanted to kind of set that scene for your relationship with time um often the people that you're connecting and collaborating and working alongside with may have a different one to you and that can sometimes be really really complimentary but it also can cause conflict so i wanted to share that with you today and thinking about your own productivity style as well so we're going to move on to tools and techniques next for planning. I purposely started with planning because that is the starting point for managing our work and our time. Um, everything starts with the plan. So I'm just going to share a technique with you um, that's really, really helpful to kind of create focus and efficiency and ultimately save time. And that is batching. So it comes from... Um, kind of like the batch cooking where you kind of you, you batch cook recipes or you batch cook quantities of meals together to help save time for your time up so when thinking about batching time it's really thinking about what tasks that you do regularly that you can batch together that will save you time and also ultimately increase your focus Sometimes people then find it's easier to kind of create themes, whether that's throughout the day or throughout the week, or even have a day theme, for example, focusing on content, emails, finances. Um, what working batches also does, it helps us to monotask. So rather than multitasking, when we're juggling lots of different roles and responsibilities at the same time, that can really um, pay a price with our focus and our attention, and our energy, we're encouraging to monotask or solo task. So I'm just going to give you just a kind of a moment just to think about which tasks that you do regularly that you could batch together and therefore block out into your, your diary or your calendar, or your schedule. So just give you a moment to think about that. Please feel free to drop in the chat. Um, I'm sure other people would really like to um, hear about the kind of different um, tasks that you batch as well, because it might be might give them ideas of tasks that they could batch also. So thank you, Lisa, for kicking us off. So um, yeah, brilliant example there, Lisa, blocking out time to clear all your emails. I think that's a great idea. And it's something I definitely encourage in my email management workshop is to rather than kind of having emails um, kind of running as a thread throughout the day that's actually quite time consuming and um, kind of takes up a lot of our focus just to batch it all together, block out time to clear your emails and to um, write and respond to emails. So yeah, great example. Thank you, Lisa. Any other examples? So yeah, same with Vicky, um, also always batch and she batches emails. Anything different, any, any other um, tasks and things that you do in your day-to-day -day running that you could batch as well? Thank you, Isla, focus time on finances. Yeah, another really good example rather, um, of just batching something together. So you can really kind of get into that headspace. This is what I'm working on at that moment. And then it helps you not to get distracted um, and really helps to increase your focus and productivity. Social media planning is a brilliant example of, of batching. So some people schedule their um, social media posts in advance, or they think about creating content for the social media. Um, so really good example of that um, alongside with, with finances. Great, thank you so much for your contributions. So um, for thinking about how you can time batch, um, and there were some apps available to help you do that. Um, there's just three here that I've put, um, that I'm recommending for you. So there's any.do, there's tick tick, and there's our stack. So it's something you may, you may wish to, to do kind of manually as you're thinking about planning your day or planning your week, but there's also digital tools available to help support you with time batching. Um, next, we're going to move on to um, the thinking about time blocking. So um, Annie Marie shared with you um, early on this morning a weekly planner that will look like this. Hopefully you've got that either printed that out or you've got that to hand. Um, and if you don't, it might just be useful just to kind of quickly make a note of this and just kind of try and... Um, try and create this yourself. So I'm just going to talk through what time blocking is. It's um, a really, really popular productivity tool and a time management tool that enables you to plan your day hour by hour, batching similar tasks together. And the recommendation is to divide up your working hours into blocks of time, hence it being called time blocking. Um, and anything between sort of 20 minutes and 90 minutes, anything less than 20 minutes are things that just you know shouldn't take you very, very long to do that are good sort of fillers. Um, and 90 minutes is sort of probably the, the, the maximum amount of time that we can really fully focus on something before our energy and our attention starts to shift and we're probably ready for something different. 
So um, within that weekly planner that you've been sent, it would be really helpful to, first of all, add um, to write in or to type in um, any meetings or appointments that you have. Let's just take this week. We're only on Tuesday. So um, use, you know, use the week that you're currently working on, any particular meetings or appointments in your personal as well as your professional life. Jot those in first because um, then it helps you to see the time that you do have available. And often people think they've got loads of time and they actually have quite little. And often people think they've got only a small amount of time, they've actually got quite a lot. So it's a really good visual way of just seeing what you what time you have available. Um, and the last point on this is sort of reflect and review. So when you're time blocking your, your week and your day, things will often shift and things, you know, things change, meetings get cancelled, um, deadlines get extended you know, stuff happens. So it's always a movable feat that you can adapt your time blocking to um, to meet the, the needs of your schedule at that particular time. So just to show you the slide again, that's what your weekly panel will look like. Um, and it's also a really good opportunity to write in any personal commitments as well. So if you're, you know, doing the school run or walking the dog or, you know, you do yoga at lunchtime, um, jot those in as well. So you can really kind of get that feel for the time you have available within your week. So just some top tips here to um, help you with that. So as I said, write in your personal commitments, client appointments and meeting. Um, when you're thinking about planning a week, really sort of align those with your goals. So choose tasks from your goals and that could be your sort of your annual goals, your monthly goals, or your weekly goals, but really keeping those in line. Um, I'm going to invite you to highlight, so in either using a highlighter pen or um, a different colour pen um, to kind of highlight your power hours and your power hours are when your energy and focus are at their highest. So for the majority of people there in the morning, that kind of like 9 to 11, 9 to 12 slot is often when people are at their at the highest focus and highest of energy um, and often sort of um, later on towards the end of the day as well, but it's different for different people. So it's really important when we're thinking about our power hours that you can then match your um, your kind of most important task to when your energy and focus are at their highest. Um, also, when you're on your planner, um, as lots of you have commented already, you know, batching tasks, things like email, identifying time, uh, identifying time for admin, and also really important to schedule in breaks. Um, um, it's really, it's really, you know, I'm a really big believer on that we need breaks for our productivity, we need to boost our concentration, to um, kind of boost our well being to regain focus, um, especially if you're working at screen for a lot of the time, it's really good to get away from that so scheduling your breaks, then at least you know when they're coming, um, and it will help you kind of maximize the time that you do have available. So I think that's all of those. Yeah, so I'll give you just a couple of minutes to fill that weekly planner in. Um, I appreciate for some of you, thank you, Annie Marie just added it into the, uh, the document in the chat as well. Um, and I appreciate that for some of you, your week could be quite different from week to week, whereas some of you, it might be quite consistent, quite similar. Um, so just feel free to use the week that you're currently working on um, to, to fill that out. Thank you, Lisa, saying she uses Outlook Calendar to block out time in batches. Brilliant. Then I use a scheduling tool so clients can see when I'm available for meetings, book and slots. I'm going to, mean, yeah, that's great, Lisa. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on. Um, and Vic is had to do this for today. 73 Excel spreadsheets. Oh, my goodness. My brain is just feeling fuzzy at the thought of that. But good luck. Um, any feedback from that, please feel free to drop in the chat. It's very useful. When I work with my one-to-one -one clients, I always, um, you know, ask them to, to fill this in and it's really insightful. Often people kind of, they, they when they see it all in front of them, sort of visually in black and white, it can be quite powerful. I've had people that turn around and say to me, gosh, I'm just not spending as much time with my children as I want to, or I'm not, um, I'm not. I need to create more time for exercise or I'm one client it was amazing actually she realized that she was spending all her mornings on social media and was going down a rabbit warren um, and sort of being sucked into posts and being sent off in different directions and just making quite a subtle but powerful shift which, which was moving her social media to the afternoon and using her morning time for kind of deep focus work really made a big difference so I think it's a really useful um, exercise to do. So just give you another kind of minute or so just to fill in your planner um, and to drop in the chat any um, any reflections, any observations, any feedback from that would be would be great.
I think also what happens when you have a weekly planner, it can then help you to create daily planners. You've got that overview for the week. You can see where you're spending your time um, and it will then help you to create um, daily plans for the next day as well. OK, so going to move next on to task management. So um, task management is um, using collaborative tools. So you and your team know who's been assigned to which work, what's been done, what's outstanding and help you to manage your time more effectively. So just a couple of examples I want to share with you. The first one being Trello, which is a super, super popular um, productivity tool, um, a bit like a project management tool as well, actually. Um, and it's helping to manage, track and share tasks with your team or, and clients. It can be used and or clients using task cards and pro task cards and project boards. So it's based on sort of the Japanese Kanban style. So it's almost imagine like using post-it notes um, you've got different post notes and um, you have it's enables you to have that real overview of what there is to do, what's being done at the moment and um, what has been done. Um, as I say, it's, it's really helpful to use that. Um, you may want to use it personally, um, just for individually. It can be really helpful to be used um, amongst the team and also managing clients. Um, just to answer your question, Vicky, um, it is an app. Um, it's, a, it's something you can download. It's free. Um, and that you, know, you can pay for kind of more advanced um, elements to it, but I think it's free and it comes with like 10 boards um, to start you off with. So yeah, highly recommend it. And it's, it's, it's been used very, very effectively um, amongst a whole variety of different companies actually and, um, and, and managing different time and tasks. So that's Trello. And then one of my personal favourites to do is I always, I always sort of joke with people and say that I should be receiving commission from to do is because I'm always um, sharing um, its brilliance and, and, and sort of singing its praises. So to do is is a um, time management task management app. Um, it's again, it's free. You can pay for more um, detailed, sophisticated um, elements to it, but I've never needed to do that. Um, and to do is what's brilliant about it is that it syncs across all your devices so you can have it on your phone you can have it on your laptop you can have it on your tablet um, and, it, and it syncs across all those devices instantly and what to do is does it really helps you to plan your day it helps you to add prioritize and move tasks it helps you to remember deadlines and due dates and it integrates with gmail google calendar and slack so it's always can become like a one-stop shop for your um for your to do using your tasks. Um, it's kind of organized, very, very easy to use. Um, it, it kind of is um, created into three different areas. So you've got today, you've got upcoming, which is the next seven days. That's like your weekly overview. And then you've got um, inbox, which is anything beyond those seven days. What's particularly good about it is that um, it's, it's, it's basically like a to-do list, but a digital version. The little circles uh, next to them are where you just click and then it deletes. It's almost like the equivalent of crossing your, um, your item off your to-do list. What's particularly good about it is you can share it with other people. You can move them around. You can move these different um, items around. So I, I do that to help me prioritize. This is what I'm doing first. This is what I'm doing next. This is what I'm doing later. So it's almost like chronological order throughout the day. If you don't get around to doing something, what's particularly great about it is you then just click on the little calendar symbol and you choose when you are going to do it. So you might um, then just move that over to tomorrow or move it over to next Wednesday. So it's a really good way of just kind of capturing all the different things that's swimming around your head and having them in that one go-to place. Um, highly recommend it. Couldn't function without it, to be honest. So that's to do -ist. Um, there are other task management apps available. There's Things, which is um, can be used with Apple. Reminders, uh, again, used for Apple. And To Do, which is kind of like a To Doist equivalent um, if you're using Microsoft. Um, personally, I find To Do the best, and it's the most popular. I think it's got like 25 million people have kind of downloaded it. It's, it's super, super popular and super effective. Okay, so that is um, that. Moving next on to prioritizing. 
So great quote here by Stephen Covey. So most of us spend too much time on what is urgent and not enough time on what is important. And often people kind of inter, intermingle these the urgence and importance. And I'm going to sort of just work with you a little bit um, this afternoon about how you can separate these um, into time scales. So there's a prioritization grid, often also known as the Eisenhower matrix. Um, and that helps you to concentrate on the highest value task on your to-do list. On your to -do list. So there's um, the kind of matrix here that's been split into four quadrants. And um, I'm just gonna work, I'm just gonna kind of go through which each of these are, what they represent and, um, and give you some examples. So um, it's a little bit wordy to, to begin with, but hopefully you'll kind of, you're following and get your head around it. So you've got important and urgent. So that's when you need to do something now, it's of high importance and high urgency. You can't put it off, you can't delay it, you need to do it now. Then the next, quadrant along you've got important and less urgent so that's when you it's important it needs to be done but it's not as pressing so you can schedule it then you've got less important um, and urgent so that might be it's urgent to someone else but it's not as important to you and that's when you can delegate things um, and then you've got less urgent less important delete so it's not urgent it's not so important delete get rid of it and it's really, I find it really helpful to have this quadrant. I mean, you can just, you know, kind of have it printed out um, and have that visually, or it could be something you're kind of just sifting through in your mind that when you've got your tasks and to-dos and deadlines, that you're that you can filter these out into these different categories. Um, often people are working in this kind of important, urgent phase. So they're doing everything now, everything feels immediate, everything feels um, of great importance but that isn't sustainable and that firefighting mode can lead very easily to burnout. It's quite hard to kind of, to maintain that. So the, the ideal is that we're working in this box here in the less urgent and important. So we're, we're scheduling, we're planning ahead, we're thinking one step ahead of ourselves, we're, we're freeing up our time. Um, so when, when an urgent and important task does come in, we've got that time and energy to, to respond and to do it now. So that's um, prioritization grid, otherwise known as Eisenhower matrix. Um, I'm going to move next on to attention management. So when we're thinking about productivity and, and time management, we're also thinking about how we can um, match our attention to the time that we have available and the tasks that we have to work through. So for productivity to go up, disru disruptions must come down. And you know, unfortunately, we're, we're living and we're working in increasingly disruptive times where whether it's social media, whether it's our phones, whether it's you know, working from home, uh, having pets around, um, maybe you know, ch children as well in, in our home whilst we're working from home uh, or hybrid working. Um, you know, there's endless disruptions, whether it's food in the fridge or you know, deliveries at the door it's really, really difficult at times to, to give our time and our task, our, our fullest attention. So um, I'm just gonna share with you some ways of dealing with those distractions using some digital tools. So the first one is um, focus. So um, it's, it's something that temporarily silences all notifications or allows only specific notifications, i.e. ones that match your task, and lets other people know that you're busy. So when you're kind of focusing on your deep work, especially during your power hours that we talked about earlier, um, you've got focus there to kind of just block out some of those notifications um, and let other people know you're busy so not to disturb and distract you. Um, Self-control is also um, available to keep you focused online by blocking sites, by blocking certain sites that could be distracting at certain times. And there's also Forest App, which helps you to stay away from your phone and stay focused on your work. Um, there's also the do not disturb kind of so um, mode in your apps and um, where it's possible to change your phone notification settings, particularly on Slack, something like that, to let people know that you're focusing on your high focused um, tasks and not to disturb you during those times. Um, a really, really popular and effective um, technique is called the Pomodoro technique. Um, and it comes from Pomodoro being um, uh, Spanish for tomato. So um, it, it kind of comes from um, back in the 80s when kitchen timers, um, people had these kind of kitchen timers in the shape of a tomato. Um, so that's where it comes from. 
And so I was going to talk you through the Pomodoro technique and also show you some digital um, versions of that to use as well. So Pomodoro technique is particularly effective if you are feeling overwhelmed. It's particularly effective if you um, experience difficulty in focusing or maintaining focus, or you need a certain amount of time to focus on your task and then having a break and then coming back to them again. So what happens, you choose a task to work on, you set a timer on your phone for 25 minutes, you then start your task and at the end of the 25 minutes the alarm will go off and you take a short break up to five minutes and you then repeat that process you set another alarm another timer for 25 minutes you work on your task when the when the alarm um, stops you take a break for up to five minutes you repeat that process four times at the end of the fourth time you take a longer break sort of 15 30 minutes so when you add all those increments of time together you're looking at around about two hours which is a really good amount of time to really kind of get focused um, and really kind of devote yourself to um to some deep work so thank you vicky i've never heard of the pomodoro technique new one for me excellent glad to have uh, glad to have shared a really really effective and um yeah really brilliant pomodoro technique everybody i know that's used it finds it really makes an impact and really really helps their um focus and attention and um just a, a supportive tool that's available so that's um that's pomodoro technique and then there are there are two apps that are available that basically replicate that process um but digitally so you've got pomo focus and you've got focus to do so it's pomodoro timer and to-do list um and essentially it's there are apps that are on your um that can be on your phone or your your computer or device and you've got that kind of 25 minute countdown and you can see how much time you've got left and really just kind of helping you to focus and making that quite visual so i'm um, thinking next about tracking productivity so um there are different um kind of apps and tools available to just to help you um, get a greater sense of where you are in terms of managing your time and your tasks and your workload. So there's Toggle, which tracks the time that you spend offline, online, on desktop and mobile, and it tracks how much time you spent on each task. So it's really a good way of um, looking for trends, spotting trends and um, analyzing where those peaks and troughs are. Then there's rescue time. So that logs the time that you spend on websites and apps and groups your activity into three categories, them being productive, neutral, and unproductive. And it gives you a daily score from zero to 100. So if you need that sort of bit of extra accountability and feedback on how your um, productivity is, then rescue time is brilliant for that. Um, and again, it just sort of helps spot for trends and peaks and troughs and gives you that kind of feedback on your, on your productivity. And then there's Clockify, which logs exactly how much time it takes to send emails, complete a project, follow up with clients. So it's giving you that feedback, but it's also helping you to um, kind of measure how long things are taking and to put that into your planner. Um, and uh, are they phone apps? I think they are available on, on desktop as well. Lisa saying toggle is useful for businesses where you're dealing with multiple clients in one day. You can log time by client project and then get a breakdown of it. Useful to help with invoicing. Thank you so much for that feedback, Lisa. That's great. Thank you. Um, also, Google Calendar um, has something called Time Insight, which tracks your productivity. So it includes a complete breakdown of your time, how much time you spend in meetings and the people you meet with. Um, and then it's easy to kind of make adjustments um, and review, review your time and tasks um, and meeting time with that tool as well. Moving next on to client communication. So um, there's something called CRM. Some of you might be using one of these already or something you might be thinking about for the future. So CRM is a customer relationship manager and it helps you keep track of previous, current and potential clients. So um, it's really kind of following that sales and marketing um, journey really from that initial point of contact to maintaining and investing and, and growing those relationships. So again, it's a bit of like a one-stop shop where you can track the communication um, and the collaboration that you're having with your, with your customers um, and that sales process. And there's three examples um, that I've got here for you. So Salesforce, HubSpot and Insightly. It'd be great just to kind of hear um, in the chat from you, those of you that are using a CRM at the moment um, and which one you use and how effective you are finding it 
or if it's something that you are thinking about using for the future. Vicky is saying you're using a good old fashioned whiteboard and sometimes that is brilliant. Um, I think what's particularly good is you can share this with other people in your team um, and share it with other, other collaborators as well. Lisa's using HubSpot. Yeah, I've, I've used HubSpot before um, and also found that, found that effective. Anybody else? Any other, any other examples that are being used or experiences of using it? Haven't heard of that one, um, St. John. Thank you. So Zoho, Zoho, I'll look into that. And how do you find that, John? What's your experience of using Zoho? Good. Okay, so those are just some examples of um, different CRM systems for you. Then um, whilst we're thinking about collaborating and communicating with clients um, or with people, members of your team um, or collaborators, um, thinking about sort of collaborating with documents. I think we're, we're definitely living in times when we're sending lots of documents back and forth and it can be quite hard to sort of keep up and keep track and follow that kind of, um, have those systems and processes in place to support you, particularly in terms of sales and um, increasing increasing productivity. So there's some file sharing systems um, that ensure everyone's working from the same document. You can work in, with them in real time. So they're kind of completely up to date. Um, and live, um, and you, you can use them to keep track with your own team um, and also with your clients. And some examples there are Google Drive and Dropbox. Um, I think it's really good to have that one-stop shop where all your documents are, um, just helps you to kind of, yeah, keep on top where things are, have that go-to system, being able to share them easily with others as well, um, and just to have that efficient way of working. So again, feel free to drop in the chat which document collaborations you currently use or are thinking about using um, and any experiences you've had with them. Do lots through MS Teams, yep. Same with Felisa. Google Workspace. Thank you. I think lots, lots of these different examples, they kind of do the same thing. So my, my advice is always, you know, if, if it's working for you and it's, it's, it's being used consistently um, within yourself, but also the people that you're sharing, you're sharing your documents and you're communicating with, and that's great. I think often what happens, people set these systems up and they don't use them or they use them kind of intermittently. So it's really about developing really efficient um, systems and strategies and, and tools and they become like your go-to, um, your go-to places to support your to support your productivity. Because use drop Dropbox, there is we transfer as well. Super, thanks for sharing those with us, Vicky. Um, I think somebody mentioned earlier in the chat about using um, software to um, arrange appointments. So often what can happen, we can spend quite a lot of time, particularly over email, um, trying to arrange meetings, especially when you're trying to meet with more than one other person. There's lots of communication going back and forth when people are available and it can just be so, so time consuming. Um, so there's um, a free appointment scheduling software called Calendly, which I really recommend, where you, um, it's a very, very simple process to use. You input your working hours, you sync it with your calendars and then Calendly identifies slots for booking meetings. So you can then send that link to the other person that you're wishing to meet with and they pick um, from the available time slots to meet with you. And um, just reduce all that back and forth um, time spent over email. Then you've got some, we're talking about e-commerce tools next. So again, there's lots of different tools um, that are available um, to support um, that kind of sales transaction. Thank you, Stephanie, just picking up Canley saying it's amazing. Um, always good to hear of people that are using it and, and using it with success. So thank you for that. So um, yeah, e-commerce tools, um, lots of different ones that are available. We can get a bit sometimes overwhelmed all the different choices that there are available. So I want to just kind of really simplify that for you um, today and to share three with you, which I feel kind of do what there is that needs to be done in terms of e-commerce transactions. So you've got PayPal, which is for a single item purchase. If you're just wanting to sell one particular thing on your website, then PayPal will do that for you. It's very easy to use. set up a PayPal account, you make a PayPal button and drop it onto your website. Then we've got Shopify, which is the most um, popular uh, e-commerce tool. 
and that's when you can buy several items and you you add it drop it into a cart um, and you can add that shop to your existing website uh, if you're thinking about building a website from scratch or revamping your website then you can use sort of squarespace and wix that will incorporate shopify into that and then there's woocommerce for selling items um, through your wordpress website so again, very easy to use, you're adding a shop via the WooCommerce plugin on your WordPress website. So again, please feel free to drop in the chat if you're using any of these already, or if you're thinking about using them. Um, personally, I don't at the moment, but I'm, I'm due to be launching um, a product, a new product that I'm creating next month. So for the first time, I'm gonna be um, having, yeah, creating a, a PayPal account and having that PayPal button um, on a page of my website, which will enable customers to buy the um, product easily through my website. So yeah, I'm excited about getting, implementing that and getting that added to my website and also my business offering. Um, so Vic is, um, Thank you, Vicky. Um, so um, Vicky's meant asked a question, which is the best to use? To be honest, I think it depends on what you're needing it for, um, and how much, how much, um, how many items you're wishing to to be selling. So I, I think if you're just looking to buy one to sell one thing, then PayPal will do that effectively. But if there's a few of them, then Shopify um, or WooCommerce will be will be effective for that. Shopify is the most um, popular one, most popular e-commerce tool um, available. But um, if it's something you're thinking of, then it'd be just good to kind of do that comparison between them and see which one you think works best for you. Thank you, Lisa. If anyone would like help deciding between all the different tools, this is something that Coast Capital Digital Champions can help you with through the free day of funded support. That's excellent. Thank you, Lisa, for, for um, yeah, just for reminding people of that free resource is available for you if you want to just kind of delve a little bit deeper. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard for me to answer that question, not knowing about your business, um, but the, the Digital Champions are available to kind of just help match um, the right e-commerce tool for your business. Um, and that's great to know. Thank you, Lisa. There's digital champion Malcolm Duffett, who specialise in e-commerce, and I specialise in productivity systems and tools. That's great. Thank you for that, Lisa. Okay, so let's see how we're doing for time. So what would be really helpful is to... Um, to spend a little bit of time now on reflecting so my role as a coach is to always um, encourage people to take action um, rather than just kind of you know attending a webinar for example like today and going oh that sounds good that looks good that would be really helpful to try that and then life just gets in the way and and nothing's really been changed so I think it'd be really useful just to spend a little bit of time. I'm happy to kind of just go through my slides again um, briefly um, to identify one thing that you're going to start doing, one thing you're going to continue doing, and one thing you're going to stop doing um, as a result of the webinar. Um, and also to think about what you've learned, what changes you'll make, what challenges you'll need to overcome, and what support that you might need. So I'll just give you just a moment to kind of maybe jot those down or have a think about that. And then I will just go through the um, slides again. If you've got any questions about any of the slides that I've shared, please feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, but we'll also be scheduling a Q&A session in about kind of 15 minutes as well. Um, okay, so yeah, I'll just start it from here really. So we've thought about our um, relationship with time and the productivity style that most resonates with you. And then we moved on to tools and techniques for planning. So I was sharing with you batching and um, encouraging um, you to think about which tasks you can batch together to help really increase your focus, to build that momentum into your, into your day, into your week, um, and to create efficient methods of um, dealing with your tasks and, and your time. Thinking about which, um, which themes and which elements in your business you can batch together and to really encourage that monotasking as opposed to multitasking. We looked at those different time batching apps available to help you support you with that. Any dot do, tick, tick, and hour stack. Talks about time blocking. So when you plan your day hour by hour, batching similar tasks together. Um, and that's when it, we kind of moved on to the weekly planner. Um, that's something you might want to kind of 
spend a few minutes filling out as well, thinking about the appointments that you have available, um, specific dates in your diary, um, appointments, meetings, also your personal commitments as well, helping you really to get that overview of the time that you do have available um, and how you can best match your tasks to your energy and to your kind of your power hours, your optimal ways of working. Um, remembering to schedule in breaks and to, um, to schedule in kind of personal commitments as well. Um, thinking about when you, what tasks you can batch, thinking about when you're at your most productive, thinking also about how you can maybe day theme or, or kind of block out and batch certain elements together. Oh, I like how Vic is, yeah, said that she's used it. She always uses the process of Pomodoro technique, just never knew it was called that. More like two hours, not 25 minutes for me back in the day in the corporate world. Thank you for that, Vicky. I'm glad to, I've been able to kind of put the uh, the name to the method that you've been using quite effectively. Um, and uh, as you say, yeah, kind of blocking real lengthy amounts of time. But I'm hoping within those two hours, you've been able to schedule in breaks as well um, to kind of, yeah, boost focus and motivation and, and, and well-being. So that was the weekly planner. Um, thinking about those top tips that I mentioned, um, thinking about choosing tasks from your goals to feed those into your weekly planner um, and to identify your power hours. So I think it's really good that you know when those power hours are and it might help you to plan meetings um, or kind of create certain tasks that will most support your power hours and equally things that you can do when your energy is not at its highest. So for example, if you, if you experience a post-lunch dip, then that could be a good time to kind of go through your emails or arrange meetings, things like that. Um, so yeah, I, I really recommend using like a highlighter or a different color pen to kind of put a circle around, identify where your power hours are. They may be different throughout the week or you may find they're pretty consistent. Um, I shared with you some different task management tools and collaborative tools such as Trello, really helping to manage, track and share tasks with your team using task cards and project boards. Um, and also you can use that um, with clients as well and have that integrated into your communication system. Um, and Todoist, the task manager app that I really do need to be getting commission for, um, helping to plan your day, add, prioritise and move your tasks, integrates with Gmail, Google Calendar and is available on iOS, Android and desktop so it syncs across all your devices. I find it particularly effective having it with me all the time. So if I'm walking down the street and I have an idea of something I've got to do, I can just add it into my Todoist. If I wake up in the middle of the night and I've got to really need to capture that particular thought, I've got it there. Um, so it's just, it's really, really helpful. And there's other filters and labels that you can add to it and you can prioritize um, uh, with it as well. So it's a really, really effective tool that I thoroughly recommend. Um, but there's other task management apps available as well. Things, reminders and to do. Thinking about prioritizing and, and really separating the urgence from importance with our tasks and times. I'm going to come back to your question at the end, Isla, okay, because it's a good one. So that was the prioritization grid and Eisenhower matrix that I shared with you. Thinking of attention management, so for productivity to go up, disruptions must come down. Um, really inviting you to think about what those, some of those distractions might be. Um, and um, these are some tools that you can use to help you track that and to uh, minimize some of those distractions um, and to notify others as well when you need to be focusing on deep focus work. The Pomodoro technique that, we've, that we talked about earlier that some of you have used uh, without knowing it was called that. So that's just there as a reminder for you um, and some apps that will um, kind of mirror and replicate that, that system. Um, different ways of tracking productivity, toggle, rescue time, and clockify, as well as Google Calendar, Time Insights. Um, using CRMs, Customer Relationships Managers, um, document collaborations such as Google Drive and Doc, Dropbox, Calendly for um, scheduling meetings, and some e-commerce tools. So I'm just going to leave that last slide on there just for a moment to, um, yeah, hopefully get some sort of food for thought there of um, of sort of identifying one thing that you could start doing, continue doing and stop doing um, to increase your productivity. Um, it'd be great to hear from you in the chat um, and also anything you've learned, any changes that you'll need to make, any challenges that you wish to overcome um, and, the, and support that you might need and digital champions being one of those. 
I'm just going to answer um, Ida's question now. So any tips on getting buy-in from the rest of the team on new app system? Unless everyone uses them together, the effectiveness is limited. It's a really good question. Um, thank you, Stephanie has put here that um, they've got a session about team working on Thursday and being productive as a team um, that will be available. I think you're absolutely right. I think it is about getting people on board. I think it's important to have that consistency. Um, if, one of you, if one of you is using one method, it's really helpful to have that being shared across the team. That's something I also can help with. I run a um, training workshop, series of training workshops on time management productivity. So, um, I, I'm happy to kind of drop you a, a link with that later on. Um, but I think it's also about bringing people together in your team, understanding what's working, what isn't working, sharing good practice. I think like anything, give it a go, try it. Um, you know, have that openness and that willingness to try something new. Um, and there's the link there. Thank you, Annie Marie, for adding that in. So hopefully that's um, giving you enough time to kind of just recap on some of the areas that we've touched on today. Um, it'd be good to spend the next kind of 10 minutes or so um, just having some reflection and feedback on one thing you're going to stop doing, continue doing, start doing, um, and um, yeah, next steps for you. So please do feel free to add those in the chat. It also sort of helps with accountability. If you say that you're going to do something, you've identified that and you've shared that publicly, you are more likely to, to achieve that. So uh, yeah, building in some accountability into the session as well. Thank you, Stephanie, for kicking us off. So Stephanie is going to implement using the Pomodoro technique every day. I know it works, I just need to use it more. Excellent. So that's been a hopefully um, a good reminder of that technique for you today, Stephanie, and there's digital tools available to help support you with that. Um, or the old fashioned set the timer on your phone. Yeah, some, some good feedback there from Lisa to you, Isla. Suggestions would be that if you have a choice of apps, you get the team together to figure out what the pain points are and where you can make people's lives easier. And then you let the team choose the app you go for. Great for buy-in. Um, Isla's also gonna start using the Pomodoro technique, continue blocking out time and stop forgetting to take a break. Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, like we schedule, we schedule tasks in and we schedule meetings in and we schedule, you know, time, for example, to, to batch emails. We equally need to schedule breaks into our working day. And there's different types of breaks, you know, whether they're micro breaks where you're just literally looking away from your screen um, and just maybe doing some stretches at your desk and just kind of looking out into a different space. Um, as well as kind of um, nature breaks where we get outside and get into nature and, um, you know, get some sunlight and vitamin D. We've got social breaks where we meet up with other people and that could just be over the phone um, or it could be a virtual call or meeting somebody in real life. Um, and then you've got your kind of, you know, macro breaks, you're like your lunch hours and your um, kind of longer amounts of time away where you might do an exercise class, you might do some meditation or journaling but some other breaks that you filter into your day. So Vic is saying, yes, breaks. I'm guilty of not giving myself a break and continuing to get it finished and done. I get in the zone. I think it's really easy to kind of feel like we just want to keep on plowing on and just kind of, I'll stop when I finish. But actually our, our concentration cannot, um, can't be sustained for such lengthy amounts of time. And often having time away helps us to energize and come back to our work and increase our productivity. Um, Lisa saying if you have um, to go for a particular app, you can have champions in the business who will help people understand how to use it and start with a small point for each personal team that will definitely help them. And then they're likely to be more receptive to learning the rest of the functionalities. So that's brilliant. That support and that resource is available for you. Um, thank you for sharing that. Any others, any other people that would like to share? Things that anything they're going to start doing or continue doing or any changes that they'd like to make? got a few more minutes and then we can open it up to a Q&A session as well. It might be from people from Digital Champions as well, I might like to, um, uh, to contribute to the answers for those as well. Okay, I'm just going to share the last um, screen 
last page of my screen with you, which are my contact details. So um, if you have any questions that you didn't want to ask um, in the webinar today, please feel free to email me them and I'd be, I'd be happy to do my best to answer those questions or to refer you on um, to other people that can help you, including the Digital Champions. There's my website, um, which just gives you a little bit more information about um, how I help. And feel free to follow me at Heads Up Coaching on Instagram and connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I also have a monthly newsletter where I share top productivity tips, business support and offers um, that comes at the beginning of each month. So um, you can um, either contact me directly and I'll add your, add your email address to that or you can sign up at the bottom of my homepage, promise not to spam you. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to, great to keep in contact and to hear how you've been getting on. Um, anyone, any other questions? Or oh, I know Stephanie's got, um, wants to um, talk to you at a little bit at the end as well, and also the digital champions. So if there's no other questions, I will pass you back to Stephanie, thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you for that. Uh, really useful, even for me. You know, I'm, I'm here um, from all as possible, but there's definitely been a lot we've been delving into around productivity, you know, more apparent now that everyone's working from home. So how do you keep going? And when you haven't got people around you that are incentivizing you or, you know, you're sharing a chat with. So <clears throat> it's definitely something that we're all, all working in across the business. So, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, at this point, I just wanted to hand over, excuse me one moment, to um, Lisa. So I talked about Lisa earlier. She's um, one of our digital champions. As she mentioned, she's she's perfect for this session because she specializes in productivity and all those apps. So um, I'll just hand it over to Lisa. I've brought up your slide here just around details about accessing um, the support. So Lisa, over to you. Oh, hello, sorry, Steph. It just was changing me to a, a panelist right. there, I think. Sorry, I dis disappeared for a while. Um, could you possibly go back to the previous slides and I can just run through who the digital champions are? Yeah, of course. Two seconds. Let me get those up. Here we go. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so those of you who've not heard us say this before, welcome. Um, the digital champions are um, a team of people. We're all separate consultants, but we're all working as part of the Coast Capital team of digital champions. Um, and Coast Capital is one of the partners in this programme. As part of the programme, by attending any one of the webinars, so anyone online today is eligible, um, you are able to get a free day of support from any one of the digital champions. So Coast Capital will fully fund up to eight hours of support for you to help with your digital adoption. There are seven champions. Um, you can see the first four of us here and you can see that we each cover different areas. So Andrew is websites and CRMs. I do productivity. Uh, Malcolm, I mentioned earlier, specialises in e-commerce. Um, Rachel is an SEO expert, so she can help you with um, your SEO plans, your content plans. Go on to the next one, Steph, please. Yep, sorry. Thank you. Rob Lawrence, who's also on the call today, um, is a complete digital transformation expert, um, has actually written a book called Get Fit for Digital. So real expert in that area if you're just looking at digital overall. Um, Roya can help with accelerating growth and Susan um, looking at digital product and service initiatives. And then if you would like to access this support, um, when the slides are sent out afterwards, you can click on the links um, there is a contact form. It takes you through to the Coast Capital website where there is a specific page about the digital champions. Um, so you can find out all about us. You can find out all about Coast Capital, who also offer a fantastic range of support for SMEs in this area. Um, you just put in your contact details, as it says there, and where it says area of expertise required, you don't have to know specifically what you need. If you just put digital champion in there, that is enough. Um, it says their growth relationship associates will then follow up with you. Um, there are three of them, Ryan, Karen and NASA. NASA is also on the call today um, and they will follow up with you 
um, to see where we can help you um, undertake a quick digital review. That's not a scary thing and it takes about five minutes. It's just 20 questions, multi-choice done online to see where you need some support. Um, and then they will help you figure out which of us is the right person to help you. Similarly, if you contact any of the seven of us directly, we all work as a team, we all know each other quite well. So if you come to the wrong one of us, if you think you need something and we think a different champion can help you better, we will figure that out and we will help you make sure that you speak to the right person. So it's there, it's free, eight hours, free support. Please take it up because it's free. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. That's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's there for the taking. So, you know, all of them are specialists and depending on what area you need expertise in, they're there to offer that support. It doesn't take long uh, at all. So like Lisa said, they're going to be joining all these sessions this week. Um, and please just um, take a moment just to fill those in and um, they'll come back to you with the appropriate person. So thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Um, <clears throat> also just want to take the opportunity to talk about the next sessions we've got running this Thursday. Um, we do, um, we're going to be joined by business consultant coach Emma Mill Sheffield. So she'll be delving into the world of remote working, something that we're all getting used to. It's become the norm these days. Um, with lots of tips to support your business from onboarding and keeping your teams productive. I know Isla asked a question just around um, different um, systems that you can use and how do you get the team on board with that? I've been in the same situation joining the team and we do have what Lisa called these champions, these people who, you know, we use Monday as a, a, um, some software. It was a new system to me, but there's particular people within the team that really know it, know its um, its its nuances, all its little details and stuff. So you have those people um, who can really get the team on board with using it and making sure um, it's effective. It's a brilliant tool. I absolutely love Monday. Um, it's similar to Trello um, and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's a really good one. Um, and then this uh, next Tuesday, um, we'll be joined by uh, the wonderful Lucy Payne. So she's going to explore the tools out there for innovating your business. So funding and tax benefits and deep data insights, something, another one of those things we can't get away from. We all need to be data experts these days. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's session. Um, we'll enjoy, include the link again on how to book onto the next ones, but um, thank you for joining and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and week. Make it a productive one. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.